like you to turn to the last chapter of the Gospel of St. Luke to start with tonight. I'm going to pick it up with chapter 24, verse 44. Luke 24 and 44. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses, in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the Scriptures. You know, that'd be a wonderful prayer to pray right there. That'd be a wonderful prayer request in the days and weeks ahead. Lord, if you can open up their understanding... You can open up my understanding, Father. You can give me a better, clearer understanding of the Word of God. That would be a wonderful, wonderful request. And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in His name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father unto you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. And he led them out as far as Bethany. And he lifted up his hands and he blessed them. It came to pass while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into the heaven. They worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And we're continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen. Father, thank you tonight for the inspired, infallible, inerrant Word of God. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Scriptures tonight that are able to make us wise unto salvation. Lord, we thank you tonight. Give us understanding of the Holy Writ. Give us understanding and line upon line and precept upon precept. Give us divine truth tonight, we pray. Help us to enlarge our understanding. And Lord, for all that you do, we'll give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. If I were to title this little message tonight, it would be Parting Words. Jesus had been with his disciples for nearly 40 days, or right at 40 days wasn't constant, it wasn't continuous fellowship those 40 days, but it was intermittent visits and intermittent conversations and instruction. But now here they are. They're outside at Bethany. They're on the mount. Jesus is getting ready to ascend back to the Father. And we have, as recorded by the author Luke, this command that Jesus gave His church we're going to look at two commands tonight that Jesus gave His church as He was leaving this world. You would think that the last words of the Son of God while He was on earth would be paramount importance to the church, would you not? Would you not think this evening that the one who had bled and died and rose again had showed Himself alive by many infallible proofs is now giving last minute instructions to the church? The first one we'll look at is in verse 49. Behold, I send the promise of my Father unto you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Now Luke is the author of that gospel. If you turn over real quickly to the first chapter of the book of Acts, Luke is also the author of this book. And Luke picks up the book of Acts right where he left off the gospel of Luke. And the former treatise, chapter 1, verse 1, Have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. He didn't say suggestions, did he? He said he left commandments with them, to whom I also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, commanded them 
that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, Ye have heard of me. Now, if you're not clear what that promise was in Luke 24, then he's about to tell us in chapter five, 1, verse 5, For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. He's telling the church to go to Jerusalem and wait until they be filled with the Spirit of God. Church, if there ever was a need in this hour for the church of Jesus Christ, it's to have an infilling of the Holy Ghost. It's to be empowered to live victoriously and to become witnesses unto Him. Jesus has commanded the church in His parting words to tarry until you're endued with power from on high. Tarry in Jerusalem until the promise is sent to you. He's promised it. In Joel chapter 2, Peter took it as his text. In Acts chapter 2, he said, In the last days I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters, men and women, no discrimination. Thank God for all the sanctified women. Our holiness movement would be in dire shape tonight if it weren't for the sanctified women. I am ashamed to have to say it that way because I'm ashamed of that the men haven't been man enough and men enough to get into place spiritually. But oh, when I think about it, and I heard one of the old preachers, I don't remember, it's Brother Agin or Brother Griffith, as I was listening to one of their sermons, they was going down a list of names of the old saints of God that had such a real impact on them, and it was woman after woman. <laughs> it was lady after lady that he named out. And friend, I realize that. I look back across our lives. We were saved in the little Wesleyan church at O'Toole, West Virginia. Sister Lester and Sister Dinkins, those dear precious ladies come after the church was ready to be closed. The Wesleyans were ready to close, or the pilgrim might have been before the merger. I don't remember. But they were ready to close the church. Nobody was coming with these two dear ladies. They asked and begged the district, said, can we just go and keep the doors open? We'll go in every service time. We'll turn the lights on. We'll pray. We'll sing a song. We'll read a scripture. We'll keep the doors open. Amen. And friend, you know, those two precious ladies kept the doors open and prayed in a pastor. And in the, early, in the late 70s, God sent a little revival to that church. And I can't tell you how many people got saved in that little church but there were two little dedicated sanctified little ladies that went every service and went in sister lester would play the piano i guess sister dinkins would lead to singing now you think our crowd's kind of thin i mean they didn't have a soul to look at weeks and months maybe turned into years i don't know how long that they kept the doors open that way but friend i want to tell you there's a need in this hour for people to love God and say, we're not going to let her die. We're not going to let her die. We refuse to let the doors be shut. We need an endowment with power, church. We need Holy Ghost power to stick to the job. Stay at the job. Be true to what God is wanting us to do. Oh, thank God for those old saints of God. How they stood the test wouldn't give in and wouldn't give up. And the result of that is, I know two people sitting here tonight is a result of those two precious ladies' dedication. My daddy was a result of those two ladies' dedication. Wanda Boland was a result of those two ladies' dedication. Joyce uh, Elmore was a result of it. I could go on and on if my memory would help me. I'd go on and on and name you names of individuals that got saved. Wonderfully saved. Saved good enough to quit the sin business. That's minimum requirements, by the way. You have to get saved that good or you're not really saved. But I'm so glad tonight that Jesus has left us a commandment. He's left it not only for those apostles and that 120 that gathered in the upper room, but friend, this command is for us today. If we've not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. If we've not been sanctified holy and filled with the Holy Ghost, we need to tarry. We need to seek God until it happens. 
We need to let the fire burn out the old nature. Our old man is crucified with him. The body now becomes dead to sin. Oh, thank God for the work. Because, friend, this commandment here bears all the difference on the second commandment we're going to look at that Jesus left the church. But without the empowerment, without the victorious walk, without the deeper settled experience, we'll never evangelize the world. We'll never do it. But you know the reason the early church evangelized the known world in the first century? They preached, tarry, and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And these people became lights. They become shining torches. They become living epistles of the grace of God. Why? Because they'd stayed at the job until God purified their heart, cleansed their soul, and filled them with the Holy Ghost and with fire. John indeed baptized you with water, but there's one coming after me, he said, that will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Oh, thank God for the fire. Thank God for something that's powerful, something that has dynamic, something that creates energy, something that impels us and compels us and propels us to the work of God. You know, the flesh is weak. The flesh would rather lay around. And I realize that most of us are getting older. And I don't expect you to jump hurdles like a 16-year-old. I don't expect you to go out here and work a day's work or do what you do as, as your routine and then spend four or five hours a day calling. I don't expect that. But you know, if we would all be full of faith and full of the Holy Ghost, God would bring in some new timber. God would bring in some new workers. And if we would really pray like Jesus taught us to pray, you know what he, he told you to pray for? Pray that the Lord of harvest would send forth laborers into the harvest field. Well, that's just missionary. That's not just missionaries. Friend, you're either going to be a missionary or a mission field wherever you are. You're either trying to win the lost or you need to be won. So that's tough, preacher. I believe it's true. I believe we either want to get people saved because of the wonderful work that Jesus has done for us or we need to touch in our own experience. Now, there's a greater burden. There's a greater vision that that can be intensified. Our brother talked about adding to his love. We can add to all the Christian virtues tonight. But this command that Jesus left us to be filled with the Holy Ghost is still pertinent tonight. Still very real. And then Matthew and Mark didn't, didn't, did not mention that. But in the last chapter of Matthew, chapter 28, I believe it is, if you turn back there, he gave us another command. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. The second commandment that Jesus left those disciples in his parting words to them, he said, you've got a job to do. I've finished the work of salvation, but I'm entrusting the carrying it out to you and me. Do you see that? He said he'd be with us. He said he'd send us another comforter to help us and guide us, empower us. Help us in every way, but the work must be carried on by the church. The church of Jesus Christ, the disciples, the apostles, who he's talking to here, and every generation of disciples, and every generation of Christians, we are to take up this challenge to preach the gospel, to share the good news, teach all nations, teach everybody, instruct them on the way to heaven, 
instruct them on what Jesus told them to do in order to be saved. Friend, we dare not let our neighbors and our friends and our family go to hell because no one cared enough to tell them about Jesus. Oh, it's my desire to get the word out. It is my desire to get the word out. I had some real encouraging uh, communication this past week. It was a family that we ministered to many, many years ago. Had a bunch of little boys. And those little boys grew up and became men. And I saw a picture of those four boys and their family. There's a string of little kids. I mean to tell you, would have filled two church pews, I think. And I posted the little message I gave here Wednesday night. And he said, we've been looking for something like this. He said, we've been looking for something like this. You got any more sermons? He said, I don't believe in the internet. You don't have to. I don't care if you don't. It's your privilege. It's your prerogative. It's your conviction. But there's truth that can touch hearts. The only reason I want it is because I have an avenue to reach out there. People I never would have seen maybe again in this world. I wouldn't have known those boys hardly. I don't think if I'd have met them on the street. But I want to tell you, the Word of God is quick and powerful. The Word of God is what we need to share with people. Whether you do it with a gospel tract, whether you do it with the word of mouth, whether you verbally communicate and witness to someone, which is probably the very best way to do it. But friend, however we do it, we ought to be getting the word of God to someone. If you're bashful and can't talk to people about it, carry you a pocket full of tracts. Carry you a pocket full of church business cards. Say, you want to know about God? Call my preacher. I'm too backward to talk about it, but he's not. He'll talk to you. Amen. Amen. And love to do it. Be delighted to do it. But friend, this is what Jesus told us to be doing, is teaching people the way to God, getting the message of salvation to everyone we can. That's his command. Along with getting ourselves in the place spiritually where we can be an instrument in His hand. Self has to be put aside. The old carnal nature has to be put out. But then when everything's totally surrendered, everything's fully committed to God, then we can be an instrument in His hands to share the good news and to tell the wonderful story, to share our testimony about the grace of God. I'm glad tonight for this way. I'm glad for these parting words of Jesus. It gives the church focus. Here's what we ought to be focusing on. This are the, these are the two things he told the church to do right before he left this earth. When he comes back, what do you think he's going to be expecting the church to be doing? These two things. Getting thoroughly right with God ourselves. Getting clean in our hearts ourselves. And then doing our dead level best to bring somebody else into the kingdom with us. Amen? I believe that should be our priority. I believe that should be the main thing. There's other things to do. The grass has to be cut. Things have to be done around the church. You've got things that have to be done around the home. You've got doctor visits. You've got this, that. We've all got things to do. But in the midst of those things to do, ask Jesus to give you somebody to talk to about him. Somebody to give a track to. And by the way, we've got plenty of tracks over here in my study. If you're out, we've got plenty. So let's ask God that the Boiling Springs Church, that the people just refuse to let her die. They just refuse to let her die. Lord, we want to go back. We want to take these two commandments. We want to pray over them this week. And as well as that other statement that was in there that he opened up their understanding. You know, if we could just see the picture as God sees it, I believe we'd be more diligent to do our duty. 
I believe we can see the scriptures and understand his heart and understand his will like he knows. I believe we'd be more diligent. I believe all of us would be more diligent, including myself. God help us. I want to be clean in heart, don't you? I want to be pure in heart. I want every sin and every trace of sin and all the corruption and inward pollution, I want it out by the grace and power of God. In its place, I want the abiding presence of the blessed Holy Spirit of God. What a joy to have Him abiding within. And then, Lord, I want you to make me a witness. I want you to make me a soul winner. I want you to make me a person, an instrument that's sanctified and meet for the Master's use. Whether it's singing, teaching, praying, preaching, witnessing, building churches, whatever it is. Lord, that I can do for your kingdom. Help me to do it to the glory of God. And he's got a great variety of people that's doing a great variety of things. Jesus wants to help us tonight, church. Thank God we're the 59 or I think wife and I counted 60. Maybe we counted somebody twice. But we thank God for those people. But that's just a number. That's just a number on the board. Unless we'll take those 59 people to heart and the ones that don't attend anywhere faithfully, we'd take them on our heart to pray for them. To minister to them in any way we can. To encourage them to get back under the sound of the gospel again. Amen? So what did he say? Tarry until you're endued with power from on high, and then go ye into all nations and teach every individual what I've told you and what I've instructed you. And go ahead and baptize them in the name of the Blessed Trinity. And lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. Shall we stand? Parting words.